Hi, I'm Jonathan Campbell, and I've always liked to build things. In 2004, I was paralyzed in a bike accident and am now a quadriplegic. Despite my limitations, I found new ways to build things. And so, I'm making these videos to show others who may be injured that plenty of things are still possible. I think what happens in this frame is that, so it's got these screws in it, and then one of these, uh, has nothing on it and I think what happens is this is put in there and then these are kind of sandwiched together and then I get a screwdriver which I'll need to get and it will put pressure and it'll squeeze it outward and it'll uh, allow the frame to, the frame to close up um, I'm actually gonna get my vise out for this because I'm gonna want something to hold these flat and so uh, I'll be right back. I'm gonna get my vise. Okay, so I'm back and I have a vise, and I've got an old washcloth that I'm gonna put in here so I don't scratch my new beautiful frame. And one thing about this vise, this is interesting. So um, I love this vise. I know it looks like crap and it looks like something from like the 1800s. Um, but I was getting involved with the building things and 3D printing and whatnot, and I really needed a vise. And before I went online to see if I could find one, I, I asked my dad if he might have a um, an old vise, because uh, I thought I remembered him having a small model vise um, uh, at one point. And, um, so uh, yeah, he said he found one, and I went over there and it was this thing, and um, it wasn't the one I thought it was, but this is even better because this is actually a vice I hadn't seen in like over 30 years. This was my dad when I was a kid in his workshop, he, uh, he built me a small little workbench, and on that workbench there was this vice, and it was this vice, and so this is the vice I had as a kid on my childhood workbench. So it's kind of cool that I'm using it now. I'm actually putting, I hardly ever used it as a kid, to be honest. I really, you know, I hardly, I, I was more of a destructive force than a constructive force as a child. So um, I would like probably stick a piece of wood in here and just, and just saw at it just for the hell of, you know, you know, cutting a piece of wood. So that's kind of, I need to be careful not to crush this because this is aluminum. So that's the story of my of my vice, and this thing has become like the most handiest um, tool I use because you know I can't hold things um, even when I have a free hand, much less needing you know needing like a third hand to be able to hold something. Uh, this that's what this this is really good for so this from what I gathered from the instructions I need to slide um, trying to get a good grip on this I need to slide this in like so and then I need to take one of these and sandwich it in there Oh, this is, I see how this works. So, then I just need to take this other one. <laughs> My dog is starting to snore. Oh, hopefully when she starts to snore, she'll start woofing after, shortly thereafter. So, it's probably her dreaming of chasing rabbits or dreaming about how much she loves her dad. Okay. I'm sure it's, it's the latter. Um, let's see, I'm having a hard time getting a good grip on this. Come on. I might need to loosen this. Oh, sh So I may need to loosen these screws, which means I need to take this out of the vise and stick this in and loosen the screw a little bit, which I'm hoping I don't have to do.
Alright, I'm gonna get something that's gonna be helpful. Alright, so uh, what I got, I have a one thing that helps me pick up screws is a magnetic screwdriver. So I've got a uh, just a Phillips head screwdriver here. Uh, it's got a little bit of magnetic charge to it, and that's gonna that's gonna help me kind of hold it and guide it in with my other hand. So let me get this the way it needs to be here. There we go. All right. I wish that I had, well, I do. Wait, I've got my electric screwdriver with this. Um, I brought a regular screwdriver, um, but I'm gonna get my electric screwdriver for this. Be right back again. Okay. Back. So um, I've got to switch out my, oh. Oh, I might need to use the vise for this to pull out the. Um... Right now, I've got the Phillips head tip in here. Oh, I don't want to use my teeth. Oh. Oh, that's harsh. All right. Get this back down in here. Oh, damn it. I'm gonna use the mice. All right, I'm trying to get a good grip on this. It's about to slip out. Yeah, my, my, my tenodesis grasp is only so strong and so a lot of times it's kind of a race to um, clamp down on it with the vise before it slips out of my hand. All right, so I'm just gonna put this on here. There we go. That's all I needed that for. Yep, all right, so I've got that. So, like I said, I got this vice like, when I was a kid. And my dad is an electrical engineer. Um, but he's been doing various things his whole life. You know, um, construction projects around the house, um, that some of which are pretty amazing and required, I guess, quite a bit of confidence in his own abilities to be able to undertake. Um, but anyway, so um, yeah, I learned so much from watching him as a kid. But I think what happened with my dad, what I learned most, I think, was how to think about a problem. And approach solving it, you know, more than specific strategies. Okay, so I'm just gonna get this around. Oops. Let's see if this works. There we go. All right, so that's wow, that's sandwiched in there. So um, that was easy. And so I think also, after I was injured, um, the same is true. Uh, I did rehab and they teach you strategies for um, picking things up. You know, every, everybody's hands are different um, after an injury and you don't know what level of function you're gonna have. I think they, they teach you You know, strat potential strategies for, for getting things to getting things done and so um, so I kind of you know I think everything that you gain from something you, know, you build on top of previous knowledge or previous techniques and um, you know because like in rehab they never taught me how to put a picture frame together so um, so it's like I know I've got techniques that worked on previous projects that I've done and 
more importantly, I think that the previous projects that I've worked on have given me the confidence to realize that I've, you know, I can, I can find a way to do whatever I'm trying to get done. It takes some time, but um, you know, I can find a way. And that's not to say that there's nothing that's impossible for me. You know, um, but uh, there's a lot more possible than I think I ever thought would be. And let's see if I can do this without my magnetic screwdriver. There we go. All right. Line these out just a little bit because I feel like the next corner is going to need some space, but I may be wrong. Anyway, so we'll do that. So, uh, one person that really inspired me a lot immediately after I was injured was this guy named Spencer. I'm loosening this up because I think I need to slide this down a little bit. Um, and uh, he was this quad who was injured at the same level. So at Shepherd Center, they match you up with somebody that's... Um, has a similar injury level. Just so that you can see um, what's possible. And so uh, I was laying in bed and this guy that was maybe two years older than I was and who is who had been injured for three years comes into my room and um, he, it's ironic because he actually, he also only had, um, he had more function in one hand than he had in the other because he was in a motorcycle accident and it actually, he physically damaged his other hand more than me, more than his, his right hand. So anyway, um, I was able to see, just, I met him twice and I went out and saw him transfer into his car and it blew my mind that he was able to. And, um... And it just showed me what was possible. He was in a manual wheelchair. He wasn't in a power wheelchair. So it really, um, just those two meetings with him inspired me to the point that I still remember him to this very day. And when I'm doing something that's complicated, you know, or tricky, or I accomplish something that's really difficult, you know, I think to myself, like, I, 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 I kind of smile and I think, wow, I wonder, I bet Spencer couldn't do that. So, um... Sorry, too loud. So, um, yeah, so it's interesting that, you know, sometimes it just takes meeting the right person. Um, and that's kind of what inspired me to start doing these on, on videos is you know, because I thought, hey, maybe, maybe there's a quad out there or somebody who's recently injured who has no idea what potential they might have to be able to do things. And, you know, so maybe I could... Yeah, maybe if I did a video that kind of just showed how I managed to do things, it might, might, you know, might help. So, um, I'm starting to think as I try and wedge these together that they don't need the extra space that I gave them. So I need to actually put this back in my vise and loosen it back up and slide these in a little bit more. On the next, Building with Idle Hands, I manage to finish the picture frame before nightfall. Sadie finally gets a whiff of her own dander. And my kitchen returns to its intended purpose, reheating fast food. Yes. 
Sit, Sadie, sit. Good, good. Sit. Good girl.